I just want to say thank you. Um, I've been listening for three years. I found you via Tony Robbins, and then I went to look for Tony Robbins' teacher, so I found Wayne Dyer. And then I said, well, who's teaching Wayne? So then I found you in a conversation you had taped. I'm not sure what year. And um, it basically made Wayne Dyer was talking about his dad. I don't know if you remember this, but anyway, it made him look like you were teaching him as a child. And, and it was amazing. Isn't that a remarkable amazing. thing? That a magnificent, well-renowned teacher like Wayne Dyer yes. is willing to expose himself with an unanswered question. And those watching get to watch him receive the answer to his question in real time. And it was amazing. Yeah. It was about two hours. Yeah. And I watched the entire thing. I didn't even have the time. And I'm, I just stopped everything because I did have the time. And it was amazing. Well, that's what we mean when we say you all teach to the clarity of your example. Yes. Yeah. So I want to tell you about one meditation that I've had, and then I want to ask you a question. When I meditate, not all the time, I meditate every day. I get up early, 4.30, I work out, then I meditate, because I feel like my brain is more open after I work out. And then I listen to you for about a half an hour, and then I start my day. I have five kids between me and my significant others, so I'm busy. But um, so that time is precious, just like you said earlier, time is precious. And so, so meditation is very important to me. And you talked about daydreaming earlier, and this is, this is what those meditations are. And so I was extremely tired. It's about 8.30. This is a, a week and a half ago. And I have a meditation space in my house. I have a little corner that stays with the pillows and everything that's ready at any time. That's pre-paving right there and expectation. Yes. And it's on the way to my bedroom. It's just in this little corridor. So I walked by it, and I saw the lights flicker. And I, I was exhausted. I ran my kids around. There was all kinds of activities. And I said, oh, Esther says that Jerry visits her when the lights flicker. And so, um, so I know that, you know, that was somebody. And so my mom passed away 12 years ago. She croaked, as you would say. And I truly believe that because she is everywhere. So anyway, I said, okay, mom, I'm really tired, but I will do this. And Abraham, I will do this because you said that's what it is. And so, and that had never happened before. There had been other messages, but never lights flickered like you specifically had said. And so I laid down on my meditation mat and I have like several pillows and I usually don't lay back on all of them, but I was so exhausted. I just said, all right, I'm gonna do 10 minutes with water. You know, just a water. I just put on, a ran I just looked up a random 10 minute water meditation. I put on the water meditation and I laid back and instantly I was under the influence is what I, what you call it and what I now call it. And um, when I went under... Now before you go further, we just want to emphasize what you just said. So that meditation place is already there and it has the expectation of it. You were in a state of being really ready to just let go of your responsibilities of the day. In your words, you were sort of exhausted or tired of trying. And so without even realizing it, you had set yourself up for the perfect opportunity for a rendezvous. So much so that you timed a rendezvous with those blinking lights, which was inspiration to go further. So we're just wanting to emphasize the getting ready to be ready to be ready to be ready and the value of pre -pavy. In other words, you were setting yourself up for this rendezvous. And so? Yes. And so I laid back and I fell under. And when it happens, when I fall the way that I did that time, I, I'm, I can see myself. I'm walking along this path. It's fall. I'm just on this path with beautiful trees everywhere. And I'm walking along this path, and I come upon this large tree. All right, so let us just say to everyone else, she's utterly in the receptive mode. In the receptive mode. In other words, she's not thinking these thoughts. She's not trying not to think these thoughts. She's just in the receptive mode where what's in her vortex is bubbling up into a vision that she is receiving. Yes. That's exactly what it feels like. I'm not thinking um, whatsoever. There's no connection. Well, there's a difference between thinking a thought and receiving a thought. Yes. It's really a good thing to acknowledge whether you're thinking or whether you're receiving. And it's nice to deliberately think good feeling thoughts. But, oh, wow. When you're in the place where you're receiving. Yes. Yeah. It's awesome. So I'm on this path and I come upon this tree. A tree so big I can't get my arms around it, right? And it's solid gold. So I come upon this tree, and I'm standing there, and I'm looking at it, and I say, there's a little branch that had, like, broken off, and but it was still golden, and, and I said, well, you know, what's the mess? What am I supposed to do? And I'm 
standing there, and I go up, and I kind of like grab the branch, and right away, I hear a voice that says, no. And so I, I step back, and I'm like looking at the tree, and I said, well, am I supposed to, in, in my brain, I'm not talking to myself, but in my. Our explanation of that is that you're in the receiving mode, but you're doing what Esther's trying to do. You're trying to get too practical too soon. Right. So you're trying to turn this into some sort of a message. Right. Do I do this? Do I do this? But you're still under the influence enough that you know that you can feel that that's not the path of least resistance. That's not what this is about. Don't. No, don't break it off. Don't do anything don't with do it. Anything. Just right. be there. Right. So I stand back and I say, okay. Well, am I supposed to put my arms around it? No, says the voice. So I, so I step back. And my mother's voice came on and she said, remember when you were little, you were the tree. And so in first grade, we did a play on the giving tree, Shel Silverstein, and I was the tree. And, my, um, and I said, yeah, I know mom, I was the tree. And she said, um, no, you were the tree. And then I said, yeah, I know I was the tree. And then she said, you're the tree. What does a tree do? Well, a tree bees a tree doesn't strive or try to excel a tree doesn't even have to run around to find nourishment it just expects it to come a tree just stands there and lets the well-being and the resources of the universe flow to it yes and it was like basically you are enough like you already have all you know it's not strive here go try do this accomplish accomplish it was just like you already have it well, you're the tree. It's, it's, now you're putting your words on it. Right. I didn't, well, that's... What, <laughs> your mother didn't tell you that. No. No, no, no. no. So, she didn't say that. She didn't say that. You're the tree. Now, what does a tree do? A tree bees. Does a tree self-judge? No. Does a tree run around trying to get attention? No. Does a tree receive the resources from the universe right where it stands? Does a tree thrive where it bees? In other words, that tree that your mother was explaining to you represents the state of allowing, the state of being, not the state of trying, not the state of proving, not the state of running after things. Step one, you scramble around a little bit. You're not the tree in step one. You're the seeker, you're the asker, and the resources are flowing. This is a really good conversation to have in the midst of wanting to be more in the state of allowing. We'd like you all to just be that tree and let the resources of well-being just flow to you. We know that for many, it just doesn't seem enough to be a tree. That's why you're not a tree, is because you didn't plan on being a tree. But you gotta be tree-like you got to be tree-like in that just let the well-being come to you. And so it was so powerful. And I was telling um, a close friend this story yesterday. And he said, well, what is that around your neck? And I forgot a friend of mine three years ago gave me this Tree of Life necklace. And I've been wearing it for That's what this is all about. And, that's, and so I walk in today, and there it is. And I said, she will call me today. Notice there are the roots. It's what comes before. There's the tree. There's the receivers out here. So can I tell you one more? I just want to tell you one more meditation I had that was the same Before treat. you do. Okay. Before you do. Your, I, that was so profound. Before you do, we want to talk about meditation and receiving. Yes, that's what uh, my question. That We know. Okay. <laughs> so, so I want more of that. How do I get to that? So like, of course, every morning, it's not like that. Or every time, I don't get these like fabulous. And, but when I do, it's like... You know? At first we called this the science of deliberate creation, but you all got too deliberate and too much striving and too much trying to apply the determination that you'd learned in other places in your life to this. And deliberate creation is really what you want. You want it more than creating by default. So then we began to put the emphasis upon being in the allowing mode, being in the receiving mode, because that really is where the majority of your most productive focus is. And so one of the ways that we've been talking about, about getting into the receiving mode is by quieting your mind. Because if you're thinking thoughts that are in competition, if you're thinking thoughts that have resistance within them, then you create a vibrational struggle within yourself that doesn't allow you to receive. And so the easiest way, it's easier to teach most of you to have no thought than to have a pure positive thought because most of you don't have a pure positive thought about very many things. Maybe you can find a stick in your pile. So when you quiet your mind, you stop thought. And when you stop thought, you stop resistant thought. And when you stop resistant thought, it allows your vibration to rise. So 
that state of meditation will put you in the receiving mode but now we want to take it a little beyond that because you can see how as we visit with so many people who aren't in the receiving mode that our dominant intent would be to help them to find the receiving mode but why do you want to be in the receiving mode because when you're in the receiving mode the ingredients of your vortex can be received by you so that you can begin a conscious deliberate journey toward what you are wanting and that's the only way that you are ever satisfied satisfaction comes from one place and one place only having a desire or an intention and moving in the direction of it have you heard us say that before well think about it that vortex is all of your desires and all of your intentions so you must be moving in the direction of your vortex well your inner being is there being everything that you've put there offering a pure vibration about everything that is there the law of attraction has caused the gestation of it and now there is this powerful attraction and are you a cooperative component are you in a state of being that is allowing yourself to be drawn to that because for a while we said and if you read the vortex books get into the vortex get into the vortex but you've got to be in the vicinity of the vortex to get into the vortex and then more recently rather than saying get into the vortex what we are asking you to do is somehow some way try to find vibrationally equivalency with what your vortex is which means don't think a negative thought we're not even saying to you think a positive thought we're just asking you to do whatever you can do to be non-resistant so many people have heard others talk about their meditations where wonderful things like this happen or they have visions or confirmation of things and so so many people in approaching the subject of meditation want to jump right over there to receiving something they want to jump right over there and receive I'm we know you are well you've demonstrated it already they want to jump right over there to receive something so the first step in beneficial meditation it really is to quiet your mind but when blissful thoughts begin occurring to you that feel like daydreams that means you're in the receiving mode that means that you're translating and so just go with it for a while that was happening to Esther she didn't have any instruction except to quiet her mind and when her mind wandered to release the thought and so when when she began being in the receiving mode and thoughts began occurring to her she would breathe them away because she thought that that was something wrong that she was doing in meditation but it isn't a wrong thing it's just don't try to think the thoughts and that's what happens to people in meditation they quiet their mind and then they want to direct the thoughts in meditation you've already directed the thoughts you've already filled your vortex full of the components of your thoughts now in meditation quiet your mind but when the thought begins to come and it feels wonderful to you just watch it like a movie now did you notice that when you started to get involved in your movie no one was telling you no there was no one because non-physical does not shout no at you but it felt like no because you could feel that that was not the purpose of this that was not the reason for this and we know you deliberate wanting to prove yourself worthy beings it's hard for you to hear that you're already worthy and you don't have to prove because there's been a whole bunch of bogus information that's been offered to you by people who needed to control your behavior so they could feel better sometimes people say to us Abraham you teach selfishness and we say yes we do because if you're not selfish enough to care about how you feel and accomplish feeling good then you will not hook in and you won't have anything to give anyone else and who is it that's most likely to call you selfish someone who wanted you to do what they wanted rather than what you wanted you're speaking to who I brought today you're speaking to who I brought today isn't that pretty screwy yeah in, in, a, in a separate not he and I are in a separate relationship but you're speaking to isn't that is. pretty screwy do not please yourself please me and if you please yourself you are therefore selfish uh -uh. Eh. and so I love you I don't need any more you're amazing really good <laughs> be happy in anticipation of what's coming <laughs>